Welcome to the Life as a Spiritual Journey retreat. Uh, my name is Erica Murphy, and I've had a wonderful journey with Holy Cross for many years, both as a retreatant and as a retreat leader. So I'm very happy to be able to talk today about a subject that I feel is really helpful and important for those who are seeking a connection to God and also to a sense of meaning and purpose in their life. We often talk about journey um, and use the word, but don't really think about what that entails, right? Uh, we're all on journeys. Uh, however, uh, it's not very often that we stop and think about the different aspects of what our particular journey looks like and where we want to wind up. So uh, that's how I thought about this uh, retreat um, in a wider sense when I uh, thought about how do we break down a journey. Um, a wonderful um, uh, thinker along the lines of what a journey is, is uh, Joseph Campbell. Uh, and so today we'll be thinking with Joseph Campbell and his stages of the hero's journey. Uh, what is sometimes called the monomyth, uh, in uh, how those different stages that are portrayed in countless myths, uh, religious stories, um, and even TV shows, movies, books, uh, how all of those can apply to our sense of what a journey is. It is one thing to know that we're on a journey and to have a vague sense of where we want to wind up or what we want to feel like. Uh, however, it's very different to understand the specific parts of a journey and how they contribute to our overall uh, ability to um, find ourselves where we want to be uh, in terms of our spiritual life. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today is apply Joseph Campbell's stages of the hero's journey to the overall idea of a spiritual journey. Uh, they're not um, separate from each other. Uh, however, we can also have many different kinds of journeys. Uh, so I'll talk about that today as well. Uh, and I'll be using this uh, PowerPoint to help illustrate some of the ideas. And uh, just on this first picture, which is a beautiful picture of the evening and a dock going into the moon here, uh, that's one really important aspect of any journey, and especially a spiritual journey that we want to be aware of is symbolism, right? The symbolic is what points us to the larger concepts and ideas that are important to uh, be able to integrate on our journey. Uh, so here we have a uh, kind of uh, narrow, uh, maybe uh, a dock that uh, doesn't look all that steady. And yet, uh, if we look beyond the horizon, there's this beautiful moon uh, just waiting uh, seemingly on the end of that path, right? Uh, so there's a sense of uh, these um, opportunities, these um, bridges that might not always look like uh, the most steady or sturdy, um, but if we're looking to grasp, uh, to gain something that might feel unattainable yet that our soul longs for, uh, we need to take risks, right? Uh, and you can just imagine um, being in this beautiful uh, night space with some uh, nice warm climate uh, and gazing out at the moon uh, and feeling this kind of yearning, right, for something greater than yourself, something deeper. Uh, so that's what the spiritual journey is about. It's uh, learning how to listen to our deepest spiritual yearnings uh, and then 
putting that into action. There are some journeys uh, that we don't necessarily choose. However, each moment in our lives is an opportunity for reflection and for learning. Uh, and so each moment is a teacher uh, that is putting us closer to our spiritual goal uh, if we are listening and if we are responding in a way that is expansive and embracing uh, of the lessons that are being brought to us. This is, so this is where we begin on the journey. Uh, we begin by uh, listening to a moment of uh, longing for something um, and being able to recognize that that needs some, something more from us. Um, so, uh, so being able to know that we're on a journey helps us uh, in that sense to uh, know that we need to do something to become closer to God. So I'm going to uh, move on to the next slide, which I'll just say a little bit about Joseph Campbell, uh, who was born in 1904 and died in 1987. Uh, Joseph Campbell was a mythologist, so someone who studied uh, cultures and traditions um, all across the globe. Uh, he was someone who could just read for hours on end, endlessly fascinated by the stories from so many different traditions. Uh, and he really had this brilliant mind and ability to integrate these stories in a way that was really about um, seeing the patterns that were similar to all these stories, while also acknowledging the uniqueness of each story uh, it brought the patterns of the stories together. So we see certain themes, for example, uh, in biblical stories uh, and in stories from Islamic tradition, uh, Judaism, um, from Egyptian tradition. We see um, stories that are uh, maybe fables or myths that also relate to stories uh, that come into play in terms of movies or TV shows today. So there's a, uh, a common theme of human transformation that is shown in all of these stories. Um, and that's the hero. So we want to be able to uh, see the hero and the patterns of the hero's journey so that we can recognize our own role in being able to go through this transformation and have the uh, expansive and um, really uh, amazing transformations that many of uh, people for millennia have gone through. So it's about relating to this role as hero. Um, even if many of us might not feel like heroes, the idea is to uh, recognize the challenges and sacrifices that we need to face in order to actually attain what we want in our spiritual life. So we are the hero. Uh, and the lives of um, great beings uh, like Jesus, like Buddha, um, are there as examples for us to, um, to really be able to uh, emulate in terms of facing fears, in terms of um, being a, a student and uh, learning from ourselves, from our own experiences, uh, as well as countless other stories. Uh, so Joseph Campbell was the one who really put all of these, um, these patterns together in a really unique way, uh, which is why he is known for this hero's journey. Uh, so you can find many uh, resources from him, uh, and I'll go over some of those at the end of this presentation, just so you know uh, books that you might like to use to follow up here. Um, 
but if you just Google in Joseph Campbell Hero's Journey, you're going to find a lot, uh, both in images and just in terms of books or other information. There's a lot out there. Uh, and so that can really help you get uh, a little bit deeper uh, if you're interested in more. Uh, because in, in this hour, I'm really just uh, skimming the surface, as they say, uh, and giving you some basic information. Uh, but if you want to go deeper, there's a lot of um, good free material available. Okay. So this next slide gives us one model of the hero's journey. Now, if you go into uh, Google Images and Google Joseph Campbell hero's journey, you're going to see uh, many different maps. Uh, this is one that I find helpful because it is uh, somewhat simplified and basic, uh, but there can be uh, many different um, uh, stages to this journey in terms of how it's explained and uh, divided. Um, but for the purposes of our discussion today, it's helpful to know uh, three main stages. Uh, and I'll name those and then I'll also go through uh, some of the details with you. Uh, so we start with a call to adventure um, where the hero is, um, has some kind of call. And then that hero goes on the journey and they experience what we call initiation, where they experience challenges as part of their journey. Uh, and then they after they go through those challenges, they return into the world transformed, where they are uh, not exactly um, where they were before because they're a changed person, but they're back into a world that feels more familiar. So those are the three stages, the uh, departure, or call to adventure, the initiation, and the return. Uh, so we start at the top here. Uh, the top where we have our little um, hiker man uh, on a call to adventure. Uh, so the call to adventure, it's important to note that there are two different ways we are called to an adventure on the hero's journey. Uh, the first one is chosen, right, where we make a choice to undertake uh, an adventure or a change. You can think of many different kinds of transformations we go through. Uh, it might be choosing to go to college. It might be choosing to get married. It also might be choosing to get divorced. Uh, it could be um, choosing to go on a literal trip, right? Um, so those are ways where we uh, choose certain actions uh, that will then have their own uh, challenges and put us through tests and trials along the way. Um, the other kind of call to adventure is one that is uh, foisted upon us. So something that happens in our lives that is unexpected and not always welcome, but forces us to go through uh, a certain kind of journey. That could be, for example, um, what we're experiencing right now with uh, coronavirus. Uh, it could be getting sick. It could be someone else that you love getting sick. Uh, it could be an unexpected death in the family. It could be losing your job, right? Uh, so these are the kinds of life events that we don't choose. Uh, we don't necessarily expect uh, and yet, because of them, we're shifted into a different world, right? So that's the division here between the known and the unknown, uh, is that we are feel in the known world, we're feeling fairly comfortable. We have our bearings. Uh, we feel like we uh, understand who we are. We basically understand uh, the other people in our lives. There's a feeling of... Um, balance, right? When the adventure is taken up, 
when it's either chosen or foisted upon us, then we cross this threshold into the unknown world, right? So the unknown world uh, is a world where we may feel disoriented, where we may feel um, insecure, uncertain. We don't know how things are gonna come out, right? For example, uh, I teach undergraduates and uh, the experience of going to college is uh, very much a hero's journey. Um, you hear about what it's like to go to college, but you don't know what it's like until you're there. Uh, and when you're there, you have to find new friends. Uh, you have to learn how to uh, navigate new living situation. You have uh, left the security of your uh, parents. Uh, and so there's a whole lot going on uh, in that leaving uh, the security and known world of your primary family and moving into this unknown territory, right? So even though it's chosen, uh, it's still fraught with, uh, or can be fraught, fraught with fear. Uh, it's always fraught with an unknowing, right? So and then you go into this other unknown world and you need to learn how to navigate it, right? Um, and because it's unknown, you're not exactly sure what skills you might even need to make it in this unknown world. Uh, and therefore you start to develop these skills. Uh, and one thing that uh, arises in this unknown world very often is you find helpers and mentors as you see on the chart. So after you've committed to this journey and you're all in and you are uh, needing help, very often people will show up. Um, and this is shown in stories uh, around the world and uh, stories that you may be familiar with, right? We have, um, for example, in The uh, Hobbit, we have Gandalf shows up. Um, in uh, Star Wars, if you're uh, familiar with the older version of Star Wars, we have um, Obi-Wan Kenobi shows up for Luke Skywalker. Um, uh, for the uh, newer version of Star Wars, we have Rey um, and her mentor uh, is Luke Skywalker, right? So one aspect of the hero's journey is that once you've taken that risk or you've been thrown uh, into a place where you're um, not certain how to navigate, helpers will show up to help you uh, move through those challenges. Uh, and the temptation you see there on the chart is important uh, because there will be temptations on the journey, right? And we see that a lot in um, scripture from various religious traditions, right? Um, the temptations of Jesus are well outlined in the biblical text. There's also a very strong parallel with uh, Buddhism um, as Buddha was sitting under the Bodhi tree and also uh, had temptations uh, that were trying to throw him off from his goal. Uh, and the temptations are really about um, our mind and how our mind is engaged on our journey. So there's a temptation to, um, to not feel that we're able to complete the journey, right? We feel that we are not uh, strong enough, that we don't have uh, the equipment or skills that we need to finish the journey, or we are maybe attached to things that are, um, that we need to let go of. One uh, common temptation uh, is that we simply are feeling so um, rattled or um, disoriented in this unknown world that we want to go back to the known world, right? Uh, so there may be temptation to uh, run back to that sense of familiarity. Uh, and we see that sometimes with relationships, right? When people break up. Uh, and then maybe uh, one person uh, 
feels like they just can't continue with uh, the breakup. They they long for that uh, that comfort and that familiarity, even if the relationship really wasn't healthy. Um, and that might result in getting back together, right? Um, so that that longing for uh, familiarity, um, and in some journeys, that's simply not an option, right? In the case of, for example, losing your job or a sudden death in the family, you are absolutely in this, in the midst of the unknown world. Um, but different temptations to, uh, to not persevere through this, the transformation will arise. Then you see at the bottom this idea of abyss, uh, death, and rebirth. Uh, so the um, the hero uh, may reach a sense of feeling abysmal, right? Um, in Christianity, there's that that idea of dark night of the soul, which is really what this abyss is getting at. In terms of, it feels like a place of hopelessness, when in fact it's a place of of rebirth. Right there's there are things going on that you simply aren't aware of, um, but in the meantime uh, you feel stuck, or you simply feel like uh, nothing will ever change. Uh, and then you are able to move through that. Um, and that's where the transformation happens. Um, and then there's that, um, that word atonement there before we come back to the known world. So here I think it would be helpful to think of atonement as uh, the way it's usually split up in the at one mint, right? Uh, so atonement in, Christ in the context of Christianity is usually referring to uh, the need to atone for your sins, right? That you've sinned against God and therefore you need to do something to make up for that. In this context, it's a bit of a, um, a more complex idea of integration, right? Um, and I think the, um, the original sense in Christianity is that sense of integration too where it's not just about you sinning against God, it's about a sense of um, bringing yourself together in a way that uh, connects who you are uh, with your sense of who you are. So the idea of the hero's journey is that you are already the hero. So it's not about you becoming something, you're not becoming a hero, but your mind does not recognize it. Um, and this is where my uh, meditation training comes in um, because I talk about how the hero's journey is uh, intertwined with this idea of um, how we think of the mind, right? Because we're never, uh, we're never looking to change who we are. We're looking to discover who we are, right? If you think of any um, of these um, wonderful stories about a uh, coming of age story, um, whether it's uh, Harry Potter or uh, another story, um, it's always about the hero discovering who they are, right? They, they think that they're this ordinary creature that can't really do too much. Uh, and then it's through the process of transformation that they realize their power, right? This positive kind of power that is empowering. Uh, and the uh, one good example, if we go back to Star Wars, is the idea of the force, right? Uh, the force isn't something you do, it's something that you have to be um, skilled at in order to harness it. Um, as any, uh, anyone who uh, looks at those um, great Star Wars movies, and by the way, um, Joseph Campbell was a, 
someone who is involved with the um, the making of the Star Wars movies, right, and a consultant, uh, because that's what this whole uh, cycle is showing, right? Luke Skywalker's transformation um, is really radical from, uh, you know, just a regular uh, guy to a Jedi Knight. Uh, but the fact is that he always had that skill within him. It's just that he needed Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda to bring that out of him. Um, and so the atonement is about um, bringing together our uh, sense of who we are with the fact of who we actually are. And the fact of who we actually are is that uh, the idea of being a child of God, being a uh, someone who is has uh, the divine spark within. Uh, so that's what we're looking for when we are gazing out on that dock looking at the moon. We are uh, looking at our reflection of who we can be, right? Who we can uh, become, not that we're becoming something different, but who, what our mind can become, what our mind can recognize about ourselves. Um, and then as we um, are able to make that shift, then we return to the world. So the return is this um, coming back into the world with these gifts that we have gained through uh, those challenges, those trials, uh, those potential um, feelings of abyss. Um, and now, we can uh, give that to the world, right? The hero who uh, now sees themselves as powerful um, can bring that power to the world and do some great, wonderful things with it. Uh, and that's the, the, the ideal model of the return uh, is where the hero is able to bring their gifts into the world. Okay. So that's the, the basic outlay of the journey. As I said, this can be divided further, but um, uh, this will serve our purposes for uh, our presentation here. We'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so this video, uh, I just wanted to bring it up. I'm not going to play it since it often doesn't translate very well uh, through Zoom. But um, the um, this particular video by Matthew Winkler is a TED Ed video. It's only a few minutes. I would recommend watching it. Um, it brings together the uh, ideas of Joseph Campbell with other popular stories like The Hunger Games, uh, like The Hobbit, uh, and bring, also brings certain ideas of Joseph Campbell to uh, the fore that are important to remember. I think I'll go to uh, this slide first. Um, so one of the quotes that the uh, that video has at the end is the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek so the the hero needs to sacrifice in order to complete the journey right um, it's the if you think of a cave it's a perfect uh, symbol remember we talked about how important symbolism is for uh, the hero's journey as the uh, wonderful symbol for um, this sense of uh, being uh, ignorant, lost, right? Feeling afraid, uh, it's dark. We don't wanna go into caves. Uh, however, um, that fear that's holding you back is preventing you from getting what you need, 
right? So the fact that you're fearing the cave doesn't mean that you shouldn't enter it. Uh, because the hero at the end of the journey always receives something of value that was far greater than any sacrifice they made. So we need to be aware of what is holding us back from our quests. And when I'm doing this, um, this retreat in person, uh, I often do a journaling exercise and ask people to ask themselves, what is my quest? Uh, and that's a big question. Uh, and it's meant to be big because it draws out this uh, larger idea of our lives as holding deep meaning and deep purpose. So it's not just about getting up and uh, getting coffee, or it's not just about uh, getting up and, or even uh, our day-to-day -day lives, which have a lot of meaning and beautiful moments in them, uh, we still need to be able to put that into this larger context of our deepest longing, right? So what is the treasure you're seeking? And most of us don't have a, an idea of that uh, because we have been um, conditioned, right? Going back to uh, this idea of uh, the mind and really thinking about uh, how our minds have um, been conditioned to think in certain ways, have been conditioned to have certain kinds of restrictions in terms of who we think we can be, right? We tend to identify ourselves by our gender, by the job we hold, by the people we spend time with, by the things we read, right? And then we put ourselves into all these containers. Uh, and yet this longing, this yearning for something greater than what we are finding in our day-to-day -day lives uh, does not have a place to go because we've already restricted ourselves based on those categories. Uh, and at the same time, the mind's um, proclivity to feel fear in the sense of the unknown uh, is important to note and recognize and work with because we will feel fear, right? The hero is the one who feels the fear but does what they need to do anyway, right? So uh, finding your treasure means um, overcoming your mind, right? The speaker Brene Brown uses the phrase courage over comfort, right? And on a spiritual journey, uh, one thing that we have to sacrifice uh, often is comfort, right? What's comfortable, what's familiar, uh, feels very nice. Uh, and it's not that we can't enjoy those things, but we need to not be attached to them so that we're willing to take the risks to find the treasure. Um, and we often don't even know what that treasure is yet, which is why it takes some work. Uh, and the idea, another quote by Joseph Campbell, we must be willing to get rid of the life we plan so as to have the life that is waiting for us. Right, so again, that's about expanding and opening up our minds to the possibilities and where life is taking us versus what we feel limited to. Um, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself, right? And we all know in a limited way um, what this looks like, right? We're all part of a family. A family is uh, larger than ourselves, and it feels good to be part of a, um, a loving family uh, because it's a support system, and that's good. Uh, it's also nice to be part of a team or a group. Um, it's also uh, this idea of giving, right? Um, parents know this very well, right? You have to sacrifice for your kids. 
Uh, this is a tremendous hero's journey is parenthood, uh, both on the part of the parent and the part of the child who is going through all these different life stages growing up. Um, and if we're uh, looking at a spiritual level, again, there's this sense of uh, needing to uh, continually give ourselves to uh, this higher yearning that we have, right? That, that includes our friends, family, job, but is not limited to that, right? So thinking about what is even greater than all of these wonderful things that we enjoy, but yet are still limited or temporary, right? And uh, the next quote is one that Joseph Campbell is most known for. Uh, he says, follow your bliss and the universe will open doors for you where there were only walls. So this idea of following your bliss is so important for Joseph Campbell. And uh, it's really about uh, this idea of a divine spark in us that is uh, seeking our path. Um, and in order to um, go on this path, uh, we need to be able to recognize what the path is. So it really helps to know the different stages of that journey uh, as we just went over so that you can understand, oh, I'm in this stage, I'm in that stage. Um, it won't always be so linear, right? It's not um, exactly going to always go one step and the next step and the next. It's also gonna be more than one journey at a time. Uh, and yet if we have these larger ideas of symbols, then each moment is a, an opportunity for growth, right? So um, it's important to know that it's not just the big moments that are part of the journey, right? It's not just the, uh, the weddings or the, uh, the births um, or the new job. Um, it's also just the, the moment of, um, of a conversation with your partner, right? Or it's the moment where maybe you're in a group and you aren't comfortable speaking in front of people and, and you start to build the skill to do that, right? So it's very, it's about each moment being uh, this ability to connect to our spiritual journey, right? Our connection to the divine is present in every moment, right? That's what traditions um, across the globe have taught us uh, is that um, that connection to God is present in all times and in all places. But at the same time, we need to do practices and have ways to connect and tap into that. And it's that way that we can recognize those moments, our uh, supposedly mundane moments, as uh, moments that we are really uh, having fruitful time on our journey and able to see that we are getting closer to our treasure. So following your bliss. Uh, which doesn't mean doing whatever you want to do. That would be what the mind would uh, sometimes like to think. But again, it's really uh, knowing what that treasure is and doing what you need to do to find it. So these are the resources um, that I talked about. If you're interested in knowing more, there's Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces, that book. Uh, is about the hero's journey. Uh, he also has a resource called The Power of Myth. So the original source is the uh, interview between Joseph Campbell and Bill Moyers, uh, which is now a fairly iconic um, interview. Uh, right now, it's streaming on Amazon Prime. Um, it's also easy to get uh, copies of the DVDs online. Um, 
And that interview, they took certain parts of it and put it into this book called The Power of Myth. Um, so uh, that's a, a abbreviated transcript of the interview. Uh, and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's interested in learning more about this. Um, especially the interview with Bill Moyers, if you at least watch the first episode, he talks specifically about the hero's journey. Uh, and he says a lot in there that I can't, uh, I don't have time for today. And it's also just great to uh, hear it from him. Um, so here's my contact information, just so you have it. Um, I also hold weekly Qigong and meditation classes through Zoom, and I'm doing a future Holy Cross retreat called Encountering God. And this is, I'm going to move my picture down here. Uh, this is the next session, Meditation as Hero's Journey. <clears throat> this is a quote from The Power of Myth, so it's something Campbell said in the interview. He says, having a sacred place is an absolute necessity for anybody today. You must have a room or a certain hour or so a day where you don't know what was in the newspapers that morning. You don't know who your friends are. You don't know what you owe anybody. This is the place of creative incubation. Campbell here uh, is really saying that uh, we have to have a space of uh, to just be, right? Um, and as my meditation teacher often will say, right, we have a space in our uh, homes for cooking, a space for uh, um, just sitting and talking. Uh, we have a space for sleeping, but most of the time there's not a space for um, meditation, right? So where is your sacred space? Uh, and the reason that this is important is because we need these practices in order to discover who we truly are, right? Uh, Campbell says here, creative incubation, right? Creative incubation is the way that you find that treasure, right? That you're discovering your true nature um, and you are able to um, bring that power into the world um, and that you know the path that you need to be on. Uh, so having a, um, some kind of contemplative practice that you do is vital to being on a spiritual journey. Um, and it's very hard for the mind to simply be, right? We often feel that we're not doing anything when we're simply sitting. Um, but in fact, our uh, the structure of our brain is literally changing, right? It's been shown that even after two weeks of mindfulness meditation, the structure of the brain changes uh, and it increases our ability to focus. It increases our ability to remember, increases our uh, ability to regulate our emotions, right? So those are so important. And at the same time, we also receive a greater gift of uh, spiritual awareness and connection to the divine. Uh, and so that's what I'll go over in the second se uh, session tomorrow. So I hope that this has been uh, helpful for you and um, I hope that you can use these different ideas of the stages of Campbell's hero's journey to help you understand and give um, meaning to each moment in your life. Uh, it's really been able to do that for me. Uh, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have this larger idea of um, journeys, of transformations. Uh, it's also really helped me with times and moments that are difficult. Uh, whether those are more mundane emotional uh, fluctuations that happen where I'm feeling uh, either depressed or anxious or other times where I'm having a difficult time, 
this really gives us a sense of perspective and it's given me a kind of stability uh, that I um, haven't really found in any other source. So um, take care and I hope that you are um, joyous uh, on whatever journey that you're taking because remember that bliss is a um, an integral part of our journey. So the more we can uh, get on the, the path that we are meant to be on, the more we will experience and feel that, that bliss and that joy.